Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen, a work of creative nonfiction detailing the author's time spent in a mental institution in the late 1960s. This book was a national bestseller and was adapted into a film starring Winona Ryder and Angelina Jolie. I believe it actually won Angelina Jolie the Best Actress Award. Um, I bought this book on a whim. I didn't really know that much about it. I just saw it in my local bookstore not too long ago. And I was like, I've heard of that. And you know what? I'll read it. And I'm really glad I did. I really am. This book was a rather illuminating experience and one that was very well written, I feel. The closest thing that I can liken this to would probably be like a female variant of Ken Kesey's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This being, however, a memoir uh, and not a work of fiction, the events that this book describes uh, supposedly at least actually happen. This book was really good, actually, just to rate it, you know, right up front. I think this is probably a good B, a good solid B of a book. There were a couple issues that I had, mainly just things that I wanted to see more out of it. But overall, this was a really good book, and I'm really glad I read it. Uh, so, Susanna Kaysen was, I think she was like 18 uh, when she was committed to McLean Hospital in 1967 for a borderline personality disorder and suicidal ideation and she ended up staying in there for going on two years which is much longer than she was initially planning to stay and this book just details the interactions and the day-to-day -day happenings that she uh, that transpired around her in which she took part in during her stay in the hospital. There's nothing really shocking or, um, you know, tumultuous in this book, I guess. I think a lot of books written about uh, mental health or that take place in, you know, asylums or mental institutions, I think a lot of people might expect there to be some kind of uh, shocking or depraved content in there or something. This book's not like that. This, uh, there's, this is the, the events which she describes are relatively mundane, but it's through that mundane quality that she's able to kind of just talk her way through coming to grips with her own flawed and fractured psyche, as well as kind of point out some interesting things about the uh, the ways in which mental health is assessed in society, or at least back then, and some of the potential shortcomings in that field, in that area. Now, this book was very well written. The prose was not uh, overly complicated, and it was she didn't really go in for a lot of high-caliber vocabulary, but uh, simpleness and directness is sometimes the best course, and I think it worked very good here. It was eloquent, direct, but easy and easy to grasp, and I think that worked. But it's, it was never inept or clumsy, and she was able to very, she was able to articulate very well the points she was trying to get across, and the conversational style of it really did help because it makes it easier to kind of grasp the points I feel that she's trying to make. So uh, this book kind of issues uh, conventional chron chronology. It's told very out of order. Uh, in, in fact, I don't really know exactly in what, I will, you kind of get a rough sense of the, 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 uh, the pattern in which these things happened, the order in which these things happened, but by and large, it kind of jumps around a lot, which is, is fine. I mean, it, it, keeps, it, keeps, it keeps you on your toes more than, I guess, just reading a rote day one, day two, day three kind of thing. Uh, and this is a very short book. I think my copy was only 168 pages. But she really does get a lot of miles out of the content in here. And um, there's the characters, the secondary characters in this book, are actually pretty memorable. She doesn't really flesh them out a whole lot uh, other than just relaying to us their, their, their various diagnoses and their past. So I guess they're probably more well-developed than I think you would anticipate in a memoir because that's usually not the goal of a memoir or um, a 
something like this is, is to, you know, create fully realized characters. Uh, she actually does a pretty good job here. They're not entirely rounded, I think, but I really did get a pretty good sense of these people and from the ones that were kind of just had mild problems in the psych ward to the ones that were very likely never going to get out because the problems they had were so severe. She interacts with a lot of different kinds of people in this book, a lot of people with lots of different problems to with varying degrees of severity. And uh, a lot of it was kind of uh, sad, honestly, to read what, what some of these other girls uh, had to go through. Some had, you know, rough home lives. Some were ex-addicts and junkies. And some were just had some horrendous <laughs> uh, mental issues. But uh, she eventually got out, obviously, and became a best-selling memoir. So there is a happy ending. At least there's a silver lining. Uh, but it's really the 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 things it's not so much the actual events she's describing that are of the greatest interest but rather uh, what she extrapolates out of those things she literally does talk there's a, a great portion of this book is given over to a discussion of the definition of insanity and how subjective of an experience reality can sometimes be and exactly where does the definition of insanity lie? Of course, insanity is a legal term, not a medical term, but exactly how can a person be truly denoted as insane or if they're just seeing things from a different perspective? Now, she fully and wholeheartedly acknowledges that she had some serious mental issues, uh, and she the things some of the things she describes in here are really kind of bizarre, like there's a point there's a point in the book where she comes to believe that she has no bones and she wants to be x-rayed because she thinks that there's nothing inside her. Uh, so obviously, I mean, she did have some serious, you know, mental issues, but there is kind of a gray area uh, in there where she points out some little things where she's like, uh, especially when it comes to time, because she's, she's very kind of obsessed in this book, or she was at that age. At, at, at the age she was in this book with keeping track of time like whenever she has to undergo a minor surgery she wants to know exactly how much time she lost in the surgery because she real recognizes that she uh, already is kind of handicapped in a way and she wants to be able to know where she's at in relation to everybody else and try to ke catch up and keep up and um, she makes some very interesting and cogent points about can you really be mad, insane, if you recognize that you are mad and insane? Because uh, she talks about the the difference between the mind and the brain. And this is a very interesting point that she makes, that the brain, what you know, your, your physical organ inside your skull of the brain is responsible for taking in stimuli and processing sensory input but your mind, kind of the abstract, intangible concept of your consciousness is responsible for using that data to create a worldview and to, you know, situate yourself in your external environment. And she makes some very interesting points about how if one of those things is not in agreement with the other, then you're in trouble because that's what she was. She, on only part of the time, she reckoned her only halfway. Uh, like she had chemical imbalances in her brain and such that kind of handicapped her a little bit and made the data that she took in not be the most reliable, but yet her mind was consciously able to recognize that it wasn't reliable and that some of the things that she was... Um, experiencing were not valid and were not real and so it's kind of like i guess if you've seen that movie a beautiful mind the way that he of course that is a terrible terrible representation of schizophrenia because that's not at all what it's like but in the context of that movie he is able to figure out that he does in fact have schizophrenia uh because he is consciously able to recognize that the people that he is hallucinating 
do not obey the same rules as all the other actual real people. Uh, again, that's, that movie is not exactly the most accurate representation of that, but you get the point. And so she kind of has the same thing where she is thinking insane thoughts and like experiencing things that aren't real and aren't valid, but yet at the same time she is consciously thinking about the fact that she is thinking about these things and she recognizes that they are not real and they are not valid. And so she kind of, there's kind of this gray area, like how insane can you be when you recognize that you are largely insane? It's kind of like that. She like, I mean, just read the book because it'll explain it much better than I can. But there is some really interesting stuff here. And she also points out some double standards in um, mental diagnoses, or at least of the time. One thing that I really liked and that I really kind of cheered on was her uh, the quibble that she had with the use of the word or the, the, the term compulsive promiscuity in this book because that was something that that was a symptom that she had um, that the doctors all made notes of was compulsive promiscuity, uh, which is, I guess, still today largely used in diagnosis for uh, people with certain mental disorders, but only women with those certain disorders. And she makes an excellent point about that, that the word, uh, that the term compulsive promiscuity or the word, just the word promiscuous is only ever labeled, leveled at women. It is never used with men, even if they have the same condition that the that a woman has. And I really did like that. That was something I really enjoyed reading because that is such a bullshit term. Uh, promiscuous, I mean, it, uh, it, it is a word that is only ever leveled at women, not at men, even though they oftentimes display the exact same behavior. It is a very double standard kind of word. And she really does call foul on that. And she calls out the bullshit as she sees it and as she had to endure it. And I really did like that. So this book was just a really good book. I th My complaint, like I said, I think there was a little bit more out of it that I kind of wanted her to go into. It's a very breezy read. Very little is ever harped upon in great detail. Um, it goes by, the, the, the events it covers go by at a very rapid pace. And I was kind of, and I would have liked maybe a little bit more time spent on the characters that she was interacting with, the people she was incarcerated with. I would have liked maybe a little bit more on that just to kind of flesh them out a little bit better. And like sometimes like some characters will get like write-offs when they exit the story. Like she'll say, oh, they went and they did this and they married this person and blah, blah, blah. And then some characters just get dropped and never mentioned again. And I, I would have just liked a little bit more there. But uh, it, it this book was definitely food for thought. And I think that's kind of what it was intended to be uh, because there are some very valid points that she makes in this. And it was well written again. Like again, you're not going to get blown away by the quality of the prose, but it's very good. Sometimes, you know, I give some authors like Stephen King kind of a hard time for using overly conversational uh, prose and a writing style. But with here, it actually works because when you're dealing, she's dealing with so many like medical and mental issues and like stuff that she's taking out of textbooks. And it really kind of works because it's not like you're getting beaten over the head so much with facts so much as it is her relaying it to you in a more layman manner, kind of. So yeah, the writing I don't really have any problems with. I would have liked to, I would have liked to have seen her do a little bit more with some things, uh, but... And, but by and large, this book was great. She made some cogent points. So yeah, I'd give it a good solid B. Yeah, Girl Interrupted is a pretty good book. So yeah, Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. Have you read Girl Interrupted or have you seen the movie Girl Interrupted? I have not seen the movie. I would like to, um, but let me know down in the comments. Either way, if you have read the book and you liked it or if you've seen the movie and you liked that. Uh, if you have not read Girl Interrupted, I could definitely recommend this book if you're into, if you like reading, you know, uh, well-written works of nonfiction. Because this is, as I said at the beginning, this is a work of creative nonfiction. This is not 
a a memoir in the traditional sense. This is written very much like a novel. Like if you didn't know, if it didn't say on the cover or on the back flap that this is, or on the back cover that this is a true story, you would probably just think you're reading a novel because it's that. Like there's tons of dialogue, way more dialogue than you actually than you normally see in a memoir such as this, and so it reads very much just like a novel. So yeah, it's a very well written work of creative nonfiction. And I could definitely recommend this if you're into learning about the mental health or just reading one person's account of their own struggles with a, a flawed and kind of broken mind. Uh, definitely check this out because it's very interesting and it also raises some interesting questions and makes some good points as well. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. And as always, if you have enjoyed Anything you've seen or heard here today, uh, leave a like, subscribe, help the channel out a little bit, and until next time, peace.